Let us pray, Heavenly Father. Truly, Lord, we want to glorify your name. We want to lift you up this morning. Father God, we thank you for your mercies that has brought us into your house. Father, some of us were weak, but we're still here. Some of us are burdened, Lord, but we're still here. Some of us, Father God, are discouraged, but we're still here. But we're here, Father God, because we know that our hope is in you. We know, God, that you are the solution to every problem. You are the answer to every dilemma, oh God. And this morning, Lord, as we gather together, Lord, I pray that you will touch hearts this morning. Lord, it just won't be another Sunday as usual, Lord God. Business as usual. Father, we know, God, that where your presence is, is fullness of joy. Father God, that when you're in the midst, oh God, we can expect signs and wonders. We can expect revelation, oh God. We can expect a ream of word from your lips oh God we can come into your house expecting something extraordinary we can expect something miraculous oh God so father as we stand before you today God we are know that we are not perfect vessels father God we are flawed vessels oh God we mess up and we have hang-ups oh God and we are distracted but father we're in your house today because we know that you are the one true God and our desire Desire, Father God is to hear from you in this 2023 our desire oh God is to be used by you in this 2023 our desire oh God is to be about our father's business Father God as we see the days going darker as we see Lord God all the things that you said was going to transpire transpiring in our, our lifetime we know God that it, there is, needs to be an urgency about the work that we are doing. Father, I'm asking you today, Lord God, that you will remove veils from our eyes. I pray, God, that any shackles that are holding your people, Father God, any obstacles, oh God, that is standing in our way, any Goliaths, oh God, that are in our lives, oh God, that's keeping us suppressed and oppressed, oh God, and keeping us living in fear. This morning, oh God, I come against every demonic interference over this assemble, oh God, over our lives, oh God, over our children's lives, oh God, in the workplace, oh God, wherever we go, Lord God, I am praying, oh God, that you will lift us up high above the situation, oh God, and that we will trust you, oh God, that we will trust you, Father God, that as we launch out and do the things in obedience, oh God, that you will be a way maker, oh God. Father God, you will be a chain breaker this morning, oh God. You are a miracle maker, oh God. I believe that, oh God, that you're going to turn us around, oh God. As we sacrifice ourselves, oh God, as we give ourselves completely into your hands, oh God. Lord, you will show us what we are capable of when we trust you, oh God, to lead and direct. Father God, you said trust not on our own, it's lean not on our own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge you and you will direct our path. Father, I pray that you will direct the path of everyone in this building today, oh God. Father, I God, I pray that Lord, if we were steering off in the wrong direction, Father, in this 2023, that you will steer us back. Father, I pray you will put us in right alignment with you this morning. I pray, God, that you will help us, Father God, to find our place, our connection to the power source, Father God. You are the power. You are the wind beneath our wings, oh God. And though Satan may box us, and though Satan may put obstacles in our way, we will not be defeated in 2023. We will not allow circumstances, oh God, to prevent us from walking in our high calling. We come to make a stand against the adversary this morning. We come to draw a line in the stand and say, no more, no more we will be subdued, oh God, and passive, oh God. But Father, we pray this morning for Holy Ghost boldness upon your people, from the oldest to the youngest, oh God. That Lord, that the light of God and the power of the living God will fall afresh upon your people this morning. Father God, 
we pray right now, Lord God, that you will knit us together. Oh my God, I pray, Lord God, that the spirit of unity, harmony, and love, oh God, will be found amongst this assemble. We come against every schism. We come against every contrary spirit, oh God, every spirit of division that's been sent against this people, against this assemble. I come against it this morning in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare that this is a house of love and this is a house of God and we will worship you this morning, oh God, in spirit and in truth. My God, we look to you this morning. Father God, I pray, Lord God, that Lord, you will lose your people today. Father God, you know what we need, even before we ask it, oh God. Even before it comes past our lips, oh God, you already will know what we need. You promise to supply all our needs according to your riches in glory. So today, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that you have already made provision for us. You have already paved the way for us. You have already appointed blessings for us in this 2023. And we are going to chase those blessings, oh God. And we will not take no for an answer. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for every soul that's in your house today. And even those that wanted to be here and couldn't. Father God, I pray you will bless them yet abundantly, oh God. And that they will have a blessing wherever they might hear this message. I commit them right now into your hands as we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus name we pray amen and amen let's give God some praise this morning oh let's change the atmosphere let's give him glory let's give him glory call up a standard let's lift up your hands and say thank you for the breath that we are drawing right now call up a standard glorify his name hallelujah my God I thank you Like you, Lord Jesus. Oh my God, I thank you. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've made up my mind that I'm not going to settle for second best. Amen. The word of God says we are the head and not the, tail. and not the tail. Sometimes we use those scriptures like they're song. You know, like kids' nursery rhyme, we just sing them. Yeah. But we don't oh, fully yeah, understand them. I was doing just a small little devotional and something comes to me that it's not only just to hear the word, but we have to understand the word. And once we understand the word, we have to apply the word. Yeah. We have to put it into yeah. action. Yeah. Or it's just a seed. Yeah. It's just a seed and it's just like a dead yeah. seed because there is no applying. Yes. And even when we apply it, we have to water it with faith yeah. and keep standing on it and keep pouring faith and keep standing and believing that God's going to bring it to pass. Yeah. We are not Amen. defeated people. Amen. We are children of the Most High God and we will be victorious in this 2023. I believe that with my whole heart. Heavenly Father, I give God give thanks for just being here today. Just just, just glorifying Him. Uh, just, I try not to look at my phone with too much YouTube and rubbish because it can distract me. Yeah, but I just saw can. some people, three people that died in the hotel in Scotland. You know, they went to have holiday. Mm -hmm. The time when they thought they were resting and the, you know, the hotel burning, they died in it. You know, we are not guaranteed. But we need to make sure that we are right with God. <coughs> we need to make sure that we are right with God every day. Every single day. Put right the wrongs. Mm -hmm. God knows we messed up. So just yes. come and tell him about it. Amen. Don't put it off. Because we don't know. Mm -hmm when our time is going to come. Amen? Amen. At this time, I'm just going to call upon Pastor Peter, who's just going to give us the, the notes. And it's a year that will be different to last year. It's a year where we're going to go forward. Amen. Amen. When the children of Israel was facing the um, Pharaoh behind him and the Red Sea was in front of them, but the word of the Lord came to say that they must go forward. And so in 
in this 20 and 23, our theme for this year is to go forward. It doesn't matter what's behind us, it doesn't matter what's in front of us, but we're going to go forward. Go for Amen. Uh, Paul said, forgetting those things that are behind me, I press towards the heart, the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. And part of the message that I preached on the first Sunday was about going forward. And so we're going to move forward in this 20 and 23. Amen. I mentioned that we had uh, completed the... So for the notices, forward still. That resonated with me. I felt like, yeah forward it's like a, a, um, an army moving forward together regimented and moving forward despite the obstacles praise the Lord praise God amen praise God we're gonna have the praise and worship um, if you can turn to your redemption song but the first song we're gonna him we're gonna sing is hymn number 13 Standing on the promises of Christ our King. Standing on the promises of Christ our King. Through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing on the promises of God. 
faithful, he's not man that he will lie. Stand upon his promise. I often think about Abraham and God promised him he was going to have, you know, a whole generation. You know, he never saw the full extent of the promise. But he had a taste of it. You know, with Isaac, he had a taste of it. God is able to do extraordinary things, but he requires our faith in his word and trust in him in order to see them fulfilled. Amen? Amen. Amen. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting? Fully trusting, you know. Some of us are half trusting, a quarter trusting. Fully! Fully committed and sold out. Amen. Praise God. We're going to sing that together this morning. Have you been to Jesus from the land?
there's, there's the expression that says where there's life there's hope thank you Jesus there is no repentance in the grave it's too late it's too late now is our opportunity to put things right the grievances you have with your family your siblings your colleagues whoever it is put it right now hallelujah make peace because that might be the thing that's holding you from the blessing for 2023 you know you need to make sure that you are in right standing so that you can stand on those promises of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let us sing the final Amsaurus song. Uh, uh, chorus. <coughs> I will praise you, Lord, with every breath that I take. I will praise you, Lord, this promise I make. Should eternity end and start all over again? You know, we say it quite flippantly, but there's going to be some hard times coming up. I'm not telling you because we know we, we, we're taking this stand, but it's going to be easy. I have no doubt it's going to be hard. But God gets the glory, you know, when it's hard and we get the break. If it was an easy thing, you know, we, we tend so well, we did it in our own strength. But when it's hard and we know we've come to the end of ourselves and it was only God that brought us through, then, then, we're going to sing, help me sing now. And when the goings get tough, you know, there's nothing like praising God. Even if you don't know what you're praising Him for, just praise Him. It changes the atmosphere. If you're feeling low and discouraged, the bills are coming in, you saw the heating bill and you're thinking, what am I going to do? Praise God! Because He will hear the praises. It's easy to praise God when the going is easy. But when the going's tough and you can find a praise on your lips, oh, the devil can't. It, it, it confuses the adversary because he's expecting you to be discouraged and depressed. But we are not going to be. That is not our portion. Praise God. I will praise you, Lord. Praise God. We are not going to fasten our eyes on what is going on.
on, but we're going to fasten our eyes Amen. upon him Amen. that can change circumstances. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Even then, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Remember that song. When the, book, when the box comes and the, the foot comes and you find yourself oppressed, you find a praise, you dig it up from the boots and you praise God. You praise Him and say, God, I'm trusting you. I don't understand. This is not what I was expecting. Look at Job. Look at Job. Everything was shaken. Who can come back from that? But God was in it. He didn't understand it. He wasn't party to what was going on. But God knew what he was doing. So we give God thanks this morning. Praise God. Amen. At this time, I'm just going to call Sister Barbara, who's going to give us the morning scripture reading. Praise Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise Through it all, Amen. we have to learn to trust in Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I stand here to give the morning's reading, and it's taken from Isaiah chapter 6. Reading from verse 1 through to verse 7. I'm also reading from the New King James Version. And if I could ask those of you who can stand, if you could stand for the reading of God's holy word. Here beginneth. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the doors were shaken by the voice of him who cried out, and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongues from the altar. Verse 7 and last. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Here in the reading of God's holy word, we know they're already blessed, but we're going to honor them by saying, Glory, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it's now and never shall be. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to thank Sister Babs for reading the morning scripture. Bless you. Praise God. And at this time, I want to hand over to our speaker for this morning. Congregation, Pastor Trevor Stevenson, Pastor Trevor, <coughs> Congregation. Side has increased hey. and the temperature inside here is quite warm. I'm seeing Pastor Peter in his coat and I'm saying, How is he doing it? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sweating already and I haven't done nothing yet. So <laughs> but it is really, it's really good to be in the house of the Lord today. We read from this scripture this morning, Isaiah chapter 6, and I want to focus on the verse where it says mine eyes have seen the king the lamb upon the throne the theme I want to bring to us this afternoon is seeing God anew in 2023 seeing God 
a new 2023. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lamb upon the throne, who reigns forevermore. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lamb upon the throne, who reigns forevermore. or sharpness of vision measured at a distance of 20 feet and if you have 20 20 vision you can see clearly at 20 feet what should normally be seen at that distance so having 20 20 vision does not necessarily mean that you have perfect vision 20 20 vision only indicates the the sharpness or clarity of vision at a distance in high definition, those of you who have HDTV, the technology provides an additional 100 lines of resolution on a screen uh, uh, to enable uh, the picture to appear uh, very uh, virtual, lifelike. It's referred to as super clarity. Mm. Whether you stand 10 feet away or 2 feet away, the picture you see looks perfectly clear. No fuzzy lines, no distortions, and no shadows. And so we need to understand that our vision can be obscured by things that can get in the way. For example, if you are at a, a concert, for example, and uh, you've paid uh, your, your big money for your ticket, and then somebody stands up in front of you, then it's going to obscure your view and you're going to wonder what you paid for if you can't actually see what is happening <coughs> in front of you. You can't see the performers and so forth. Or maybe if you're at a distance and 
you know, there's somebody in front of you and you think you recognize them from a distance, you could mistake them easily for somebody else because of the vision you have can be obscured or it's too far away from you. And so likewise, if we, if we are at a distance from God through our neglect of spending time in his presence or in his word, this can also affect how we see God. Yes. Are you with me? So let's look at some of the, 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 the ways that some of us may tend to, to see God. And there are many different ways that people see God today. Some people see God as being out there very far away, un, unreachable, somewhere out there in the universe. And some people may see him as... Uh, a very form, in a very formal way where they, they have, a, 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 if you like, a deep respect or a reverential, a reverential uh, fear of him. Some people may see God as a vending machine. You know, you just tap into God anytime you want something and if you don't get what you, vet, what you, what you want, you're, you're vexed and you're, you're upset and then you don't bother with him and so forth. But if we, you know, if you think of someone who perhaps was um, raised in a, in a home where um, the parents, you know, continually said to you uh, when you were wrong, when you were disobedient, if they probably said to you, you know, God's going to punish you, then you will grow up thinking that all God does is, is punish you, that God is a God who loves to punish. Or if you grew up, uh, 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 you know, you may think that God's love is conditional and we know that God's love is unconditional. Or if you grew up in a home where there was an absent father, <coughs> your understanding of God as a father would be somewhat distorted. Are you, are you, are you still with me? Amen. We're looking at how people tend to see God. And you may see God as uh, uncaring, unconcerned about you as an individual, unconcerned about your feelings and your emotions and so forth. But how we see God will determine how we face life's challenges. The Bible says, in the year King Uzziah died. Who was King Uzziah? King Uzziah was a good king, the king of, of Judah. And he began to reign at the age of 16 years of age. And he reigned for some 52 years. And uh, when we look at King Uzziah, he did what was right in the sight of God. He was a, a good king military leader and led Israel to many victories over their enemies and he was skilled in very uh, in various areas he was a popular king but unfortunately pride got in the way and according to second chronicles chapter 26 verse 16 we understand there that he usurped the office of a priest did what only the priest uh, should do and this caused him to be punished uh, by by God. Second Corinthians chapter 26, 16 says, but when he was strong, this is King Uzziah, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense onto the altar of incense. And we know that God struck him with leprosy and he had to live in isolation for the rest of his life until he, he died. But Isaiah had a great reason to be discouraged and somewhat disillusioned at the death of King Uzziah because a great king had passed away and because his life ended in tragic circumstances. But the question is, where was God? Where was God in all of this? And Isaiah says, I saw the glory of the Lord. He, he describes the glory of the Lord. He sees the Lord as sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted. He says the train he saw in his vision, the train of his robe filling the temple, and the seraphim stood above him. What he heard was equally magnificent, because one of the seraphims said one to another, they were crying, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. I mean, this is Isaiah's uh, vision at a time where he was been grieving, grieving the loss of a great king. But God allows him to see this great vision. 
Now when we think about the throne, we think of sovereignty, we think of leadership, we think of power, we think of rulership and control and, and authority. And what Isaiah saw was the greatness of God. Despite what was happening there and then, he was seeing the greatness of God, the awesomeness of God, the holiness of God, the power of God, the authority of God. This is what Isaiah was seeing at this time. And I want us to understand that nothing takes our God by surprise. And I think it's important that we understand this as we go through 2023. Nothing takes our God by surprise. He's an omniscient, omniscient God. And Isaiah declares in Isaiah 40 verse 28, he says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Nothing takes our God by surprise. The experiences that we encounter in life can determine or influence how we see God and can obscure uh, uh, obscure our vision of of God. I'm gonna be warm up here. <laughs> can easily obscure our vision of of God. Our key verse in the year King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up and his trail train filled the temple. Now as we reflect on 2022, in that year, what did you see? What did you see in 2022? During a four month period, the United Kingdom had four chancellors of the Exchequer, three prime ministers and two monarchs. The year concluded with near 11% inflation and a series of walkouts by nurses, immigration officers, driving test examiners, all that has, has come along. Postal office strikes, rail strikes, and all kind of stuff happening. The worst for a decade that the UK has experienced. In the year 2022, what did you see? Setbacks, knockbacks, Mm. Loss of employment, financial hardship, mm -hmm. broken relationships, loss of loved ones, and the list can go on and on and on. And the question is, where was God in all of this? My answer to that, he was still sitting on his throne. And so as we go out through, through 2023, as Matt Sister Mandy was saying, challenges are going to come our way setbacks are going to come our way but we must never forget that our God occupies the throne of glory and there's never a time when our God is not occupying the throne that is the assurance that we have as children of God as we go through this year no matter what comes our way God is still in control there's never a time no matter what you're facing, there is never a time when your God is not in control. He's always in control. And so we ask then, and many times we do ask these questions, although God is on his throne, we will still ask the question, why did God allow certain things to happen? And there's nothing wrong with asking God questions. You know, we've, we've lost some people through death. And there's been individuals who've prayed for. The churches have come together and they've prayed for loved ones who are suffering. And they still go home to glory. God decides to call them home. And we may ask the question, God, we've prayed. Why? Why? And we have to, we have, we have to encourage and comfort ourselves with the songwriter that says, we will understand it better by and by. That's how we have to encourage. If, you, if you're not careful, as Mandy was saying, the devil is a liar. And he will come along and say, I thought your God was a healer. Mm. I thought your God answered prayer. Then why did he take such and such a loved one? Why did he do that? Yeah. Your God isn't real. You're wasting your time serving God. That's what the enemy does. But let us keep our eyes focused on the Lamb of God who occupies the throne and reigns forever and evermore. Oh, glory to God. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David many a times had painful and and experiences where he questioned God and he expressed it in times of brokenness and sometimes he didn't get the answers that he was looking for but some answers to be honest with you if we got the answers it would not change the circumstances it wouldn't make much difference to us in those circumstances but we just have to keep trusting God 
You know what the psalmist declared in, in Psalms 56 and verse 3 says, What time I am afraid, I will trust in you. In times where yeah. of uncertainty, in times when I'm faithful, in times when my back is against the wall and I don't know what to do, in those times, I will continue to trust in the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we know that leaders, oftentimes, uh, as we know, um, confidence is lost in leaders and they're, they're voted out of office. Mm -hmm. Governments fail to deliver on their promises and are voted out of power. Kings are dethroned, but no situation, no circumstance can dethrone our God. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. huh? If we don't like the government or if, if the, the, the people in the particular party uh, lose confidence in their leader, they can give a, a vote of no confidence mm -hmm. and before that leader is ousted. Or if we don't like or the government don't fulfill their policies when it comes around to election they get less votes mm -hmm. and they're out yeah. but our god <laughs> oh my god there's nothing that can dethrone our god kings are dethroned but the king of kings and the lord of lords will occupy his throne forever oh bless the name of jesus glory to god hallelujah glory to his name hallelujah and the fact that our approachable god still occupies the throne of heaven makes it possible for us through prayer to come before him and pour out our hearts of sorrow frustration and confusion so isaiah may have been depressed and discouraged because a great leader of judah was no longer on his throne but god in heaven now shows isaiah he basically says to Isaiah, don't worry, don't worry that Uzziah is no longer on the throne because I am still on mine. That's so why I believe that God was saying to Isaiah in his time of discouragement and bereavement, said don't worry that Uzziah is no longer on the throne but I am still on mine. Bless the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Knowing this lets us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in the time of our need. Hallelujah. So oftentimes there can be a distorted image of God. And many people are not consciously aware of the distortions or of the image of God that they have. And a distorted image of God may lead to difficulty in trusting and submitting to Him and His Word. And it may also lead us to have the wrong expectations of God. One A.W. Towser, a well-known American uh, Christian pastor and author and spiritual mentor, in his writing in the 1980s, uh, sorry, 1960s, he acknowledged the pervasive importance of an accurate view of God. And what he said was, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us because it affects every choice we make and everything we do. He compared a right concept of God to a foundation of, of a building where it is, it is uh, inadequate or out of plumb. This is the building he's referring to. He wrote that the whole structure must sooner or later collapse. So having a distorted view of God is nothing new. And this happened to the children of Israel, we know when they <coughs> left uh, Egypt. We know that God had delivered them out of Egyptian slavery, took them across the Red Sea, provided breakfast every morning for them through manna that fell from heaven. But when it was hard to find water, their view of God became somewhat obscured. They no longer saw him as their provider. The Bible says that they grumbled and complained against Moses and said, why have you brought us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? Time after time, God came through for his people, but they still failed to see him as their provider, as their protector, and as their way maker. A.W. Towers also went on to say that when we don't view God correctly, we risk worshipping him not as he truly is but as whom we have created him to be that's risky business right yeah. risky business so there are times when God is at work orchestrating things in our lives he's at work working things out for our good 
opening doors, closing doors, but we can't always see because our, our view of him is distorted. But the challenge for us in 2023 is to look again. Amen. We're reminded of the story in 2 Kings chapter, chapter 6 and verse 15 to 17. One morning, if you remember the story of Eli Elisha, he was able from his bedchamber to discern the plans of the enemy. And so the king got vexed and believed there was a snitch in the camp. And he said, which one of you is going and telling my enemies what my plans are? And they says, none of us. It's the man, Elisha. So they planned to go and apprehend Elisha and I guess do him harm. And so the Bible says that one morning, Elisha and his servant woke up and saw themselves surrounded by these enemies. And his servant panicked and said, what shall we do? Elisha prayed immediately, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And the servant went and looked again, and he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire around Elijah. Lord, open our eyes that we may see you at work in 2023 yes. again in the book of 1st Kings chapter 18 after three years of drought God promised rain in verse 42 to 44 the Bible says that Elijah climbed the top of the Mount of Mount Carmel bent down to the ground and put his knee his, his face between his knees go back and look toward the sea he told his servant and he went up and looked. There is nothing there, he said. Seven times, Elijah said, go back. The seventh time, the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So we need to understand that when you can't see God at work, look again and keep looking till you see the hand of God, the one who is faithful, the God who cannot lie, the God who cannot... Uh, go against his word he, uh, you know he is a faithful God a God who keeps promise you know sometimes if you remember when you was a child and your parent sent you to go and look for something and you say mom I can't see it I can't find it and mom said go back but look you know and so so when you can't see when you pray for certain things and you can't see the hand of God look again and this is when we have to dig deep and, 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 and call on past experiences. When you are waiting on God to come through for you and you cannot yet see the thing that you're waiting for, draw on past experiences. Remind yourself that when you are in need, God provided yesterday. When you needed healing yesterday, God healed you. When you needed an open door yesterday, God opened doors. And the same God of yesterday is the same God today. He does not change. He's the same yesterday today and forever Amen. bless the name of Jesus hallelujah bless the Lord all oh my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name so go back and look and see the God who declares the God whose eyes are on the righteous and his ears that are attentive to their cries according to Psalms 34 and verse 15 go back and look and see the God who is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble, according to Psalm 46 verse 1. Go back and look and see the God who declares, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future, according to Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. Go back and look and see the God who says, no good thing will I withhold from them who walk uprightly, according to Psalms 84 and verse 11. Go back and look and see. The Bible says, God goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid nor discouraged according to Deuteronomy 31 and verse 8. Go back and look and see the God who declares that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear according to Isaiah 65 and verse 24. Amen. Go back and look and you will see the hand of God at work 
even if it's not at that moment in time, you know God has worked for you in time past. And the same God who worked for you in time past will work for you today and during 2023. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So seeing God in 2023 as a God of divine providence. Providence means to see in advance and provide for. According to Exodus chapter 3 and verse 14, God refers to himself as the I am God, which means he who becometh or the becoming one. And so in 2023, God wants to assure his people that he will become whatever the occasion requires. He will become or he will be whatever we need him to be or to become when the time comes. So during the exodus from Egypt, we know that God was a, 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 a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And I want to say to us today, when we look at the God of divine providence, the God who will become whatever we need him to become, when we need him to become, he will become a comforter to the comfortless. He will become a strength to the weak. He will become a friend to the friendless. He will become a provider when you need a, a provision. He will open doors when you need doors to be opened. He will close doors when you need to be, them to be closed. Whatever you need him to be, God will be it. You know, I remember Mandy said today, um, um, you know, we're chasing after the blessings that God has in store for us. But I'm not correcting Sister Mandy. But I'm saying, when your life pleases God, when you are trusting in God and trusting His words, blessings will come running after you. Amen. You will not have to chase any blessings, but the blessings will come after you, running and chasing you down when you remain faithful to God. Is that right, Sister Mandy? Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So God is the El Shaddai, my supplier. He is Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He is Jehovah Rapha, my healer. He is Jehovah Shammai, the Lord is there. That means that God is there everywhere you are. There God is. Any situation that you are in, God is there, right there in the midst of the fire. He was there with the three Hebrew boys. When Daniel was in the lion's den, God was in there. Bless the name of Jesus. That the king, when he came in the morning, he said, did your God. Imagine, the king put him in, 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 in the lion's den and did not expect to see him in the morning. But when he saw him, in the morning said, did your God protect you? Amen. That served as a, as a testimony Amen. of the reality Amen. of the God that we serve. Amen. He is able to protect us Hallelujah. no matter what comes our way. We can trust God Amen. to overshadow and protect us, his children. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So in 2023, we will have experiences and challenges that have the potential to obscure our view of God. Therefore, we are going to need our reference points, reminding ourselves of the time that God has come through for us. Hallelujah. Seeing God anew serves as a motivation to serve. I'm going to say that again. Seeing God anew serves as a motivation to serve. In the year King Uzziah died, Isaiah committed himself to speak on behalf of God to his people. A people, you see at this time when, when Isaiah got the vision, Israel were in a, 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 a state of rebellion because they had returned to, to idol worship. The people whose hearts were now insensitive, whose ears were dull, whose eyes were dim, to the things of God. And so God asked, who shall I send? And who will go for us? And as Isaiah's commitment, he says, here am I, send me. You see, it was the experience and the vision that Isaiah had that served as a motivation for him to surrender and commit himself to service. What motivated Isaiah to make such a commitment was his encounter with the vision of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords sitting on his throne. It was when he see, it's when we see what Isaiah saw 
that we too will be motivated to serve him. It is those people who see God anew in 2023 who will be motivated to serve. It's those people who see God anew in 2023 who will volunteer for service. It is those people who see God anew in 2023 who will be motivated to, sh motivated to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. It will be those people who are motivated in the year 2023 who, who will desire to dwell in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. I heard what Pastor Peter was saying this morning about people um, making themselves available. And I'm saying to you, when you, if you see God anew in 2023, mm -hmm. Pastor Peter will not have to beg anybody. You will come and volunteer and say, Pastor, what can I do? Mm -hmm. Pastor, I am available. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what I believe will happen when you see God anew. It will motivate you just like it motivated Isaiah. And Isaiah said, here am I. I am available to you, God. And that's my prayer today, that as we see God anew, people will come forward. We won't have to chase people down and beg people to do nothing, but they say, here I am. As I give myself wholly available to the Lord, I'm giving myself available to service. So the pastor will not have to feel burdened that he's carrying everything by himself, but they know the church is behind him. They're willing because they've had a, a fresh encounter with God that causes you to volunteer and make yourself available to serve. Just as Isaiah, you'll say, here am I, available to you, God. Hallelujah. So seeing God anew in 2023 could be sporadic. Mm -hmm. But we want to see him anew throughout the whole year, mm -hmm. continuously. And this means no matter what challenges life throws at us throughout the year, we will not allow it to obscure our view of God. Mm -hmm. And at the end of this year, 2023, we will have a testimony that the year, in the year 2023, I saw the Lord anew. If God spares our life to see 2024, we want to look back and say, in the year 2023, I saw the Lord anew. Hallelujah. Amen. And it made a difference to how I operated during that year. Hallelujah. We want to be able to declare that in the year 2023, I saw God as my refuge and strength. In the year 2023, I saw God as a present help in the time of trouble. In the year 2023, I want to be saying, I saw God as a comforter, as a healer, as a deliverer, as a provider. We want to experience uncommon testimonies. Yes. Amen. 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 Uncommon Hallelujah. testimonies. Yes. Because our testimonies yes. serve as a witness to the world. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. We want to be able to tell the unsaved, brother or uh, person that God made a way when there was no way Amen. when they write you off and say you're finished mm. and then God gives you a breakthrough it's a testimony yes. a testimony that your God is real that's what we are called upon you know to make our God known yes. to make people know that our God is real and our God our people can only know that God is real through you and through me yes. through our lives our testimonies and how we live our lives before them. So Isaiah's exalted and elevated view of God, we can see that in verse 1 to 4. And this gives us a sense of God's greatness, His majesty and power. Our daily frustrations, society's pressures and our own shortcomings narrow, narrow our view of God. What we need is a biblical view of God. As high, seeing Him as, as high and lifted up, seated on the throne with dominion power and authority and the ability to empower his people to face whatever challenges may come our way in 2023 whatever the enemy may throw at us in 2023 we are overcomers we are more than conquerors through christ who loved us and gave himself for us hallelujah how you see god is how and what he will become or how he will be to you and therefore it is necessary that we have the co a, a correct and un undistorted view of God for he is no longer on the cross is that right he's no longer in the tomb he is the risen king of kings and the Lord of Lords for mine eyes have seen the king 
the Lamb upon the throne, and He reigns forever and ever more. Hallelujah. So God wants us to have a correct view of Him. The Bible says in Jeremiah 9:24, it says, "But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone." that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth and that I delight in those things. I, the Lord, have spoken. So in the verse 5, our key verse today. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah, as I said, was a righteous and godly man. Yet when he saw the King upon his throne, the Lord of hosts, he saw how sinful he was in comparison. <coughs> so when we see God anew, it will allow us to see our failings and our shortcomings. It will allow us to say to ourselves, boy, you need to come up higher. Mm -hmm. It will allow us to examine ourselves and say, God, I need to be closer to you. It will allow us to say, God, I need to be uh, deeper in your word. You know, and, and our hearts will, you know, will we'll draw us around and say, oh, deeper, yet I pray, and higher, every day and wiser blessed lord in thy precious holy word it's amazing what you know what god will do for us when we see him anew because you know we can get so how can i put it we can get so used to god that our expectation of him is not fresh you know and we can limit god and we have we can have god in a box and 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 we don't expect god to do anything new anything different but we have him in a box and say god has always done it this way and we can be trapped in this idea that this is the only way that god works yes. but when we see him anew our expectation of him will go to another level and we'll be able to say with confidence that there is nothing that my God cannot do. Our faith will rise to another level Amen. and will believe God for the impossible because with God, all things, not something, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. When we see God for who he is, he will not only change our perspective of ourselves, but it will change how we face our situations and circumstances because we will see him on his throne as bigger than any problem or circumstances that we will ever face. Hallelujah. Psalms 16 verse 8 says, I have yet, sorry, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. And so our prayer should be today to ask God to reveal himself to us more clearly ask God to make us aware of any areas in our lives that may obscure or cloud or distort our view our concept of God mm -hmm. so in 2023 may we desire to see God anew we don't know what tomorrow holds we only have today tomorrow is not guaranteed for any one of us and God can call any one of us to himself at any moment in time my desire when I leave this earth is to leave empty to fulfill all that God has called me to do I don't want to die with any regrets. And so the people of God should be saying, I, you see, I got to a place in my life as, as, a, as a Christian. I gave my life to the Lord um, in my t early teen, well, at 12 years of age, actually. I was baptized at 13. But I was just going through the motions. And I came to a stage in my life where I said, God, there's got to be more to it than this. And I came to a stage in my life where I said, God, what will you have me to do? Like Saul on the Damascus Road. That was his prayer. Lord, what will you have me to do? And that should be the prayer for each one of us. Because when God called us, he called each one of us with purpose in mind. And so if we are conscious of that fact, we must get to the stage where we're saying, 
there must be more to it than this where we are seeking God and saying God what is it that you called me for what is your purpose for my life Amen. I cannot I cannot be satisfied every week coming to church sitting down and being fed and getting fat spiritually and not giving anything out yeah. there must be a time in my walk with the Lord where I say God what is your purpose for me you have called me with purpose in mind what is that purpose and so I, I should be seeking God to say God reveal to me what your purpose is for my life and it doesn't matter how big or how small not everyone is called to be a pastor a preacher evangelist but there are certain things that you can do and it should be a, a, a desire in our hearts to say God what is it what is it that specific thing that you want me to do and even while you're waiting on God to reveal that to you make yourself available because as you make yourself available and volunteer to do a small thing in doing that God will reveal to you exactly what you want what he wants you to do you may even find your purpose in the thing that you volunteer to do so the challenge for us today let it not be business as usual I challenge the church today let it not be business as usual the fact that God has spared our lives to see yet another year means that God has kept us for a reason yes. Yes. so many people have passed but yet God has kept us yes. for a reason Amen. to make him known in whatever way we can in whatever sphere we can because remember we are glory carriers yes. we carry the glory of the Lord God, so wherever we go we should make a difference Amen. Yes. they should see the glory of the Lord in Amen. us Amen. not that we're shining bright <laughs> but how we behave yes. how we conduct ourselves and everyone is is, is cussing and carrying bad and laughing at, at, at rude jokes and stuff like that you're not involved wow. and then they say well what's, what's the problem with you you haven't got a sense of humor mm -hmm. that's your opportunity to say no I'm a child of God I don't deal with those things I don't laugh at those kind of jokes and then they begin to observe you oh that's what you're a Christian and that's when they begin to watch you mm -hmm. you dare slip up and they say I thought you said mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes. But we've got to remain conscious wherever we go yes. that we are yes. glory yes. Yes. We We yes. represent the kingdom of God. Yes. We are his representatives yes. here yes. on earth. Yes. So my prayer that throughout 2023, let the glory of God be seen. There's a song that says something like that, isn't it? Let the glory of Jesus be seen in... I don't know what the word, so we won't, we won't sing that. <laughs> well, let's just bow our heads. Let's just bow our heads. Hallelujah. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lamb upon the throne, who reigns forever. Mine eyes have seen the King, the Lamb upon the throne, who reigns forever. Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you. We want to bless you and praise you this Lord's Day. We thank you, Father God, that you have spared our lives to see another year. A year of opportunities, Father God. Opportunities to make your glory be seen. And so, Lord, today we've been challenged by the word, seeing God anew in 2023. May we have the desire, Father God, to seek your face. May we have the desire, Lord, to draw closer to you. May we have the desire, Lord, that you would do a deeper work in us. And Father God, as we see you, as we seek to see you afresh and anew in 2023, give us a fresh revelation of yourself. Father God, those things that have the potential to get in the way and to obscure our view of you, to obscure and distort how we see you, we come against those obstructions and those obstacles and those distortions. We come against them today. No matter what they may be, we come against them now in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Father, we pray for strength. We pray for courage, Lord God, as we go through this new year. We know, Father God, that there will be challenges. We know, Father God, that there will be obstacles. We know, Father God, that the enemy will try everything in his power, Father God, to derail us. But we declare today, God, that we will stay on track. We declare today that we will keep looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. But no matter what is going on around us, Father God, we know that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and you occupy the throne of glory forever and forever and forevermore. This is the confidence that we have, oh God, in you today, that we can trust you, that we can take you at your word, Father God. Help us that we will keep our hand in your hand, Father God, that we will not be distracted, we will not easily be discouraged, oh God, but we will stay focused, focused on you. And I pray, Father God, as Isaiah, as Isaiah, Father God, as he saw you sitting on your throne, high and lifted up, Father God, as we see you afresh, Father God, may it serve as a motivation, Lord God, for us to get involved in service, Father, to be committed, Father, to volunteer our time, to volunteer to get involved, to serve and to help in the building and the extension of the kingdom. So I pray a blessing upon this congregation today. I pray for increase, Father God, in this congregation. Numerical increase, financial increase, oh God. Increase in every single way, Father God. You know the plans that you have for this corner of the vineyard, Father God. We pray, oh God, that your perfect will will be done. That you will open doors, oh God, that your kingdom will be firmly established in this part of the vineyard. We pray a blessing upon every member oh god of this congregation we pray god that you'll minister to every need that they have oh god that you'll draw close to them father god we commit pastor peter to you father god as he leads this congregation into the year 2023 i pray a special anointing upon him father god that you'll direct his path that you'll order his steps in your word father god help him to see clearly father god despite the, the distortion that the enemy might throw in his way in terms of this discouragement and distraction we come against them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pronounce a special anointing and blessing upon him, upon Sister Valerie, upon their family, Father God. May your hand of protection be upon them, Father. So we commit your people now to the power of your grace and say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. them but he couldn't see 
that God had surrounded him and Elisha, amen, with a chariot and with, with an army that was bigger than the army that was trying to surround them. And so Elisha had to pray that God opened his servant eyes, that his servant was seeing what he seen. And sometimes the reason why we have fear and disagreements with other people is because we're not seeing what they're seeing. Yes. But when God opens our eyes, we can see what the man of God is seeing. And so, for everyone today who want to say, God, I want you to use me in 2023. I want to go forward. I'm giving you the opportunity to come out here and we're going to ask uh, Pastor Trevor to come out and anoint you and pray that it's 2023, every single thing that God has for you will be for you. Come on, let's sing that song again. Oh, open my eyes. Pastor Trevor. I want to see Jesus to reach out and touch. This is your response to your theme this year. God to anoint you to go forward. Hallelujah. Despite the obstacles that may come, you're going to press. Press towards the mark of the high calling. Press towards achieving the goal and the vision of your church for 2023. Amen. So I, I, I just feel blessed. That it's not one or two, but the church, Pastor Peter, the church has come forward. What they're saying is that we're standing with you, Pastor Peter. They're saying that we are going forward with you. That you are leading us, Pastor Peter. And we are going forward. Hallelujah. We're not going back on what we're saying today. Today we're taking a stand and we're, we're, we're looking in the face of the enemy today 
and saying whatever comes our way we are going forward we're not going to stop we're not going to let them off anything that comes our way we're going to push back we're going to push out of the way we're going to trample on the feet Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. christ because we are going forward hallelujah glory, glory to god hallelujah oh glory to god hallelujah blessed be your name jesus blessed be your name hallelujah hallelujah in the name of your son Jesus Christ we come before your throne of grace we thank you for the theme that you have given this church for the year going forward and they're going forward in the name of Jesus Christ they're going forward because they're going to see you afresh in 2023 God as I have anointed them Father God each person today that has received the anointing of God they have received an anointing to go forward in the power of the Holy Ghost. They are going forward, Father God, to make a difference. They are going forward to grow and establish the kingdom firmly in this corner of the vineyard. Father, I come against every plan of the enemy. Oh my God, to distract. Uh, every plan of the enemy to derail. Every plan of the enemy to cause this, 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 this harmony. My God, I come against that in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I declare that unity will be firmly established in this congregation. Oh, yeah. I pray that there will be a spirit of togetherness. Uh, yes. One mind, one spirit, my God, working together to achieve the objective. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, Every part of the enemy be crushed on the feet today in Jesus' name. Oh God, we declare that the plans that you have for this congregation will be established in the name of Jesus. Christ. Oh glory to God. We declare every member of this congregation will have a willing heart, a willing mind, oh God, will be fully committed to the vision of this church. And the God, we will see growth. We'll see numerical growth. We'll see spiritual growth. We'll see financial growth this year, 2023, in the name of Jesus. We declare spiritual breakthrough in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Bodies healed in Jesus' name. Deliverance taking place in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. We declare part faith the Father God. That people will hear what God is doing in Fleet Street in the name of Jesus Christ. People will come, even from mere curiosity, but they will come. Because they know that God dwells here and that God is doing amazing things in Fleet Street, Street Church of God. So Father, today I commit each member to you. God, you know each member today. You know their individual needs, Father God. You know where they're at. And I pray that every need that they have, whatever need it, ha it may be, whether financial, whether it be spiritual, whether it be emotional, whether it be mental, whether it be issues in their homes, and their family, whatever the needs or issues are, God, we ask that you would intervene in the name of Jesus. Let your glory be seen, Father God. And we will not fail to praise you. We will not fail to give you the glory and the honor that you deserve. So I declare and pronounce a blessing and a special anointing upon your people today, this time forth and forevermore. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 As you know, I ended up having a of infection. I didn't expect it, it just came out of the blue two days before Christmas. I mean, the good thing is that they allowed me to go home and take antibiotics while I was at home, but they did call me to come back just to make sure everything was okay. 
but I was just trying to, you know, when you're trying to prepare for Christmas and you're trying to do everything that you need to do and mm. I felt like I was moving forward but it's a bit like, you know, when you have a setback mm -hmm. but just because I have a setback it don't mean I'm not going to still move forward because I'm going to move forward yeah, it I'm might be at name. a slower pace yeah. but I'm still going to move forward in yeah. Jesus Amen. and I just want to say I would like you all to remember me in prayer Amen. because from I was a young child the devil has been fighting he has been fighting my health to stop me from making it I was even saying to someone, because I know some of you may have heard a song that I released this year, last year I mean, um, and I, um, I remember when I went to the studio, I said to the person, I goes, I want to release it by Christmas, yes. and he said, that's a very tight schedule, but the reason I wasn't able to do anything about it before is because I was busy trying to do research in finding a studio and finding someone who was suitable, and God led me to a Christian, and he said, it's going to be a very tight schedule, but um, we will see that we can do it, and it wasn't always easy for me getting to the studio because I had to rely on my children to take me, on Chantel to take me because I wasn't able to drive because of my leg and um, I remember him saying it was still very tight but we'll see what we can do and then of course the snow came and when the snow came that held everything back, mm -hmm. everything was pushed back and I thought you know what God's will will be done, it will happen if it's to happen. Mm -hmm. And I thought, if I can't release it on the other platforms, at least I know I can put it on YouTube. But you know, come Christmas Day, it was released on all the platforms, including YouTube, and I give God the praise Amen. for that. Hallelujah. God made a way. And I remember saying to someone, my goal for this year is to write a book, because I really feel that God's been leading me to write a book, mm -hmm. you know, based part of my experiences and part because as you know I now do nutrition and health and I know that that plays a very big part in our health and I know that's why the devil don't want me here because he doesn't want me to um, share my experiences with people and to share what I now know about nutrition and health because I know that's affecting a lot of us as um, Christians and non-Christians it with the, our health it's sometimes it's based on what we're eating or we don't even realize it mm. and the devil's tried so many times to take me out mm. because the song that came to me today was I don't know why Jesus loves me mm. I don't know why he cares uh, but I'm so glad he did yes, because yes. So when you hear we've heard of so many people who has passed away I could have been in that number yes. but God has been my my life yeah. and he is not, and the devil is not gonna stop me Amen. so I just want you to keep praying for me when you see me pray for me Hallelujah. and when you do see me don't assume that I'm fine because a lot of people say I look well but it's God's grace all over me Amen. but pray for me when you see me as well I don't know why Jesus loves me. I don't know why He cares. I don't know why He, he sacrifices life. You know what she's going through. You know what she is experiencing. Yes. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus. God, we know that you are a problem solver. 
God, and there is no problem that is too big for you. And so we pray right now, God, wherever she is at this moment, God, I pray that you'll intervene, God, Lord, and you'll fix it as a someone has said, let Jesus fix it for me. He knows just what to do. Whenever we pray, let the Lord have his way, and he will fix it. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus, because we know that there is power in the name of Jesus. And we decree in the name of Jesus that you'll intervene right now and fix it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let God's people say. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Truly, the water has been troubled and stirred this morning. I'm so grateful to be in the house of God to hear today's message and to feel so encouraged. Praise God. I'm going to ask Pastor Peter to forgive me because I'm not going to sing the song that's had. And we're going to re sing from 350 for my redemption song. I just feel led that this is the song to sing. When Israel out of bondage came, the sea before them lay. The Lord reached out his mighty hand and rolled the sea away. Then forward still, it is Jehovah's will. With the billows dash and spray, with a conquering tread, we will push ahead and roll the sea away. I believe the Spirit wants us to sing that song today. Praise God. Praise God. And we're going to take this opportunity to bring our tithe and offering, which is just as much as our worship as it is to sing the song. Praise God. When Israel out of bondage came, a sea before them lay. The Lord reached out his mighty hand and rolled the sea
be our war cry. Hallelujah. Forward still. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just thank God for being with us this morning. Hallelujah. I feel so uplifted. I feel so alive. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the man of God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're about to do in this assemble. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, I'm going to call Brother Keith, who's going to bless the morning's time and offering. When we think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for us, our soul cries out. Our soul cries out. Our soul cries out. Come on, church! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Come on, church! Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we think of the goodness of Jesus and what He has done for us, church! Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Oh, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you this this afternoon for the blessings, Lord. The blessings of the message has come up to us, Lord. The blessings of the testimonies that have come to us, Lord. The blessings of the convictions that you put in our spirits, oh God, wanting to go forward this 2023. My God, you are a God. You are a lasting God. You are a mighty God. You sit on the highest throne. There is no other throne but your God, but yours, my God. There is no true king but you, everlasting king. We lift your name up high. We glorify you. We praise you, Father. We give you thanks, Lord, for the blessings we see. And we give you thanks for the blessings we have not yet seen. We believe, Father, that you in control at all times. Father, we know that you know our needs, Lord. You've got us financially. You've got us, Father, spiritually, Lord. Our plans, our project, oh God, we ask you to be part of it, to be in the midst of it, Father, as we press forward this 2023, Father. And Father, for what's in the basket, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for our jobs. We give you thanks for wages. We give you thanks for salaries. We give you thanks, Lord, for multiplication that comes from you in heaven. Father, we just thank you, Lord. Bless this basket. Bless each and every one of us, Lord, who you continue to bless. Oh, God, you brought us through this 2023. And as the messenger told us, you brought us through for a purpose. So, Father, let your purpose, let your will be done in us as we ask your blessing in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Congregation, amen. say amen. 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 Bless the Lord.